amen, and uh, I like to stick with the times, the seasons, right now, I believe we're in the 15th or 16th day, as the Bible says, before uh, the Omar, amen, in the season of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the festivals, excuse me, amen, of the harvest, preparing, amen, for Pentecost, and all that God is doing in our lives, amen, and uh, some of the people don't realize that these things are important, because uh, there is a spirit, amen, that God wants to speak into our lives, and it has to do with the, as the Bible teaches us, the agriculture of the, the beginning of the rains and the latter rains, and you're here today, and that has to do with the Holy Ghost, amen, and the Spirit of God for us in the church. But if you have your Bibles this morning or this evening, amen, you can turn to the book of Jeremiah, amen, and it's something that I've been watching closely, amen, and praying about. I mean, you know that sometimes in your life, you can live in denial, amen, you don't want to believe things are happening, amen, you don't want to believe, amen, that you're in a time, amen, that when something's happening with the people in the church, or in your own personal life, amen, we, we don't want to believe things are happening. Maybe you're, you know, like our kids, they go to school, amen, and they might be slacking off, amen, and, and they get the report cards, amen, and we see the first half, and you got a bunch of D's, amen, and then, uh, you know, we kind of a little concerned about it, you know, we pull them aside and talk to them, hey, what's going on, amen, and then you don't want to believe these things, amen, and then maybe they need some help. But, you know, you start looking at the second semester, amen, and a bunch of F's, D's, and A's. Well, you know, this is how it is for the church right now. And at some point in time, people start to harden their hearts when it comes to God. And when I'm watching over before all this took place, amen, I keep reminding myself to say this because this is the life that we are in right now where we can't go out and sow the seed of salvation to people. Amen. You can do it, amen, maybe at your workplace or not. You can uh, text and do the online thing. Amen. All that's happening, but there's some issues going on amongst us. There's some problems, amen, not just in the church world, but in our ministry here. There's some problems, amen, that you, as a as a man of God, as a father, as a pastor, sometimes you don't want to face the facts, amen, that there's something going on within the ministry of the people. Maybe in your life or at home because we experience some things and the Bible speaks about it, amen, and uh, as the Lord says here in chapter 4, Jeremiah, say amen if you follow me so far. Amen. So if you return to me, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you put away your abominations out of my sight, then you'll not be moved. And, you'll, and you shall swear, the Lord lives, in truth, in judgment, in righteousness. The nations shall be blessed themselves in him, and in him they shall glory. But thus say the Lord to Judah and Jerusalem, break up the fallow ground, and do not sow among the thorns, circumcised to the Lord. And take away the foreskin of your heart. Men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest the fury of might come forth like a fire and burn so that no one can quench it because the evil of your doing. Father, we just praise you this evening, Lord God, and I just pray for your Holy Spirit right now, Lord God, that you would minister to our hearts. The Holy Spirit, we need you to search our hearts right now, Lord God, as people of God, as leaders of God, where we stand with you. Father, we pray that this report card that you hold before us, Lord God, Lord God, be one, Lord God, of approval, Lord God. If we lack in every area, starting myself, Father, I pray to reveal it tonight, Lord God. Let your spirit, Lord God, just come right now, Lord God, and minister to our souls. Father, I praise you this evening in Jesus' name, and we all say... Let me tell you something, life, amen, are like valleys. We go through valleys and trials at times, dark, lonely places. We all experience them at times, amen. 
We are haunted, amen, by past failures. And the process of those failures are continually there. Mistakes that we have seen, amen. We've been in narrow places, self-condemnation, amen. And we condemn ourselves because of the past. Sometimes, amen, we start makes, making us feel remorseful. There are things, amen, that we see. And we, and then when we get into the valley, amen, what happens? It blocks our vision. It begins to block the vision that God had set out for you. He put you in a perfect plan. Amen. He has a destiny for your life. Then we can start compromising that, des that destiny. Amen. We start compromising the future, amen, that he has for you. Because we're looking at past failures. When we go through spiritual surrounds, spiritual valleys and dryness in your life, amen, the heart, the heart becomes hard. We look at how mountain peak, we used to be at the mountain top, now we find ourselves at the bottom. There's things in our lives, amen, that you would never cross lines or ever do or ever thought of doing, and all of a sudden you find yourself in the midst of those things. These are areas in lives, amen, that we can't understand or grasp. And we lose hope, amen. We think that God can never do, amen, bring us to the truth anymore. Or we deny the living truth, amen, and it starts to drain your life. I'm not talking to you tonight, amen, out of something that I read, but I'm talking to you by experience. And what I am watching in the church world today, not only in the outside, but what's inside here tonight. But God is speaking not only to your life, amen, because we feel worn out, drawn, drawn away, amen, and we feel that we are lower, amen, and we remember God of hold of our hearts. There's something, amen, in our lives that God is trying to speak, and he has given us time, amen, to really, really search out the matter of the heart. The hardness, amen. I'm watching hardened hearts. A lack of repentance today. People who do not want to repent and fear the repenting of, of the, you better re fear the repentance today. Because if you don't turn to the Lord, amen, you got bigger problems, amen, than just man or the preacher over the pulpit. You got bigger problems with Jesus Christ himself. He's not going to stand around and be winking his eye at your sin anymore. Because the sin that is creeping into the church, that's creeping into your lives this evening, it's called complacency. When you have become complacent, when you have become spiritual lazy, when you have not even done all the things that you need to do today, it's not just affecting our church, it's affecting all churches today. The children of Israel, we can learn from their experiences. Their experiences and then turning away from God. The Bible tells us, amen, in verse chapter 3, the Lord says, amen, the Lord says to Jeremiah, Back, the backsliding of Israel has shown herself more than the righteous and treachery of Judah. Go proclaim, amen, to these words that return to your backslide, from your backsliding. You see, because we, amen, are starting to see the hardness of heart. And I'm sorry to say, this is what I see today. Are you here today? Well, Pastor, you're being mean. No, I'm not being mean. Oh, God, amen. Some of us, amen, have failed and are afraid to admit the failure. Have fallen short. Amen. Taking our salvation for granted. Amen. Thinking that nobody's watching and God is. Amen. I mean, I want to say tonight, amen, I've been in those positions in my life. I want to be sensitive to God, but I will not hold back from the truth that the Lord begins to speak within my heart. When he starts to reveal, amen, what is taking place in our lives, amen, truth is better than a lie. I'd rather speak the truth, amen, to a congregation, amen, who used to hunger for God, who used to hunger for souls, amen, and the ministry has lost that vision because of complacency. We as a people of God have to understand God is on our side, not man. God is on our side in all things. And the spirit is alive, amen. And we need to be awakened to that spirit. We need to understand, amen, that we are in the last days. We need to have revival within our souls, amen. Stop running around and looking at everywhere else when it is before you in your closet, in your prayer. It's in, that, in this altar this evening. Can I get an amen? 
Let me tell you something, amen. There are things in your life we go through. And the ground, amen, is getting harder and harder. And it's harder to sow because we have sown into disobedience. We have not betrayed man. We have betrayed God. I turned to the Lord many years ago, amen. And I don't want to preach this false doctrine. I don't believe in all these other churchly things that they believe anymore. I believe what the word of God says. I trust in the power of the Lord, amen. I'd rather hear my what the Spirit has to speak into our hearts today. People don't want to warn you. I want to warn you. I want to let you know, amen. If you follow the Bible and follow the Word of God and get into your prayer life, amen, you will hear His voice because right now, amen, everybody's voice is in fear. But we shall not fear God. We should stand and please Him. Stand, amen, for truth, amen. Stand for understanding. Can I get an amen? The Lord points out some things, amen, that you and I have to understand. The one thing that many want today, they rather have prosperity and security. It is a proven fact that these are the things, amen, that thrust into life. Instead of truth, instead of wisdom, instead of understanding, we rather have the security of what our jobs or what your money pays for. It's the money, it's the prosperity that the people of always look to. And when we see that happening, amen, after God always meets the people's needs, amen, he always prospers. He pours out the spirit of prosperity upon the nation's life, amen, and his people, amen, always turned around and used it for pagan construction. Right. Are you here? Yeah. So I'm not using my money for, for but what, what is materialism about? What is all these things, amen, when you see, amen, let's keep this holiday and this holiday, but never the word of God. Yeah. These are things, amen, you have to search out, amen. That's why the book of Proverbs says, search out the matter of your heart. What's in your heart, amen, if it's just about security? What do we fear of losing, amen? You cannot fear of losing, amen, when people are building, amen, pillars, amen, for themselves. Pillars for their lives, amen. Security for their hearts. When they're losing out, amen, on the very sensitivity of the spirit in their heart and their mind. When they're lacking, amen, spiritual growth, amen. And they're losing out, amen, what God is trying to say. In Jeremiah, the Bible says, break up the fallow ground. Follow means hardness. Hardness of hearts. People have hardened their hearts, amen. Where, amen, do not repent to a man, but repent to Jesus Christ. Don't fear the man or what he can say or what he can do. He's not your judge, amen. It is the Spirit of God. We're just very, we're just vessels. How many of you hear me today? You know, when you look at the word, follow ground, amen, it's unplowed or unsown. Amen, uncultivated, uncom excuse me, <laughs> Sometimes, amen, after learning so much, we think we don't need to pray anymore. We don't need to read anymore. You don't need to fellowship anymore. You don't need to win a soul anymore. The spirit of entitlement starts to increase in your life. And many believers are in this place tonight. Oh, I'm saved. I'm saved. What qualifies us to use the word? I'm saved. What show, what count, what word even, because we wear a badge that says Jesus Christ. Because why people say, amen, look at my mom and my dad are saved. That does not qualify. Christ would call the church home. Would you go? Hardness of hearts has seeped into the life of people day, today. Complacency, just being happy where you're at. This is what Christ hates the most in Psalms 119, 13. He says, I hate a man who is half and half. I hate the man, amen, who's double-minded man. He's got one in one way, and he's outside tomorrow. Amen. He hides behind the mass of hypocrisy. Amen. Doesn't tell you the truth, but doesn't actually tell you a lie. He sneaks around. He does those things. But God says, break up the hardness of your heart. Can I get an amen? He looks upon our souls this evening. Amen. 
and he looks in Revelations chapter 3, 16, the Lord said, I know your works. You're neither hot, you're neither cold, but I wish you were one or the other. He says, but you are no warm and neither hot nor cold, amen. I want to vomit you out of my mouth. Because why, amen, when the religion has taken over? Somebody say amen. Are you here tonight? Am I speaking to somebody? Let me tell you something, because it's around us. Amen. It's hard to keep a fire lit, to keep that candle waxed, amen, and within your heart because it's the lamp that has to burn. This is why Jesus said, amen, a man, amen, who has a lamp, amen, doesn't put it underneath his bed, amen. No, 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 he puts it on top of the mantle so all can see, and that lamp, it burns like a fire, amen. It lights up a whole room, amen, and what are you supposed to do? You are the lamp, amen. We are part of Christ Jesus, amen. He's given us the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, to speak truth in people's life, amen, and to lift them up, amen, to let them know, amen, what we need to hear, amen, and we need to hear the truth today, Can I get? because when the lamp starts burning out, when the oil starts to dry out, amen, people start to dry out, amen, all of a sudden they get flaky, amen, no matter they can say amen no more, I can't even hear an amen from your people today, amen, because I start to question myself, is the heart getting hard, is the wick getting low, is the oil starting to dry out, amen, are they just a piece of stick that just stand in there? What is going on with our churches today? Amen. When the Spirit of God is alive, when the Spirit of God is well, amen, because the Spirit comes upon us, amen, and Jesus said, let your light shine upon the world, amen, because He is with us, amen, He will be with us for the rest of our lives. Somebody better give the Lord a shout tonight. You can understand, amen, what God desires, because spiritually, amen, we can be diseased. There are, I've seen so many who have split loyalties. I don't know what how we can have those things. You know, when uh, Elijah turns, amen, and preaches a powerful message to the nation. Nation of Israel split their loyalties. It's like a, when a husband even puts his wife, amen, in a place of truth. And when the man of God comes and says, amen, what's your truth? Their answer is simple, amen. God is my answer. Or vice versa. God is looking within our souls, amen, for what is the truth. The heart has become. Are you here today? Loyalties are no longer. Hearts become divided. When the heart, amen, takes place, and it is hard to break that ground. It is hard because why? What we are looking for in our lives today. Remember the radical change that you made? The radical change that many people come, amen, and when they taste the goodness of God, it does something. You got to question ourselves like the Lord questions us, amen. He begins to look, amen, because the question, if you look, amen, what was happening in Jeremiah's day, the poor brother was preaching and preaching, and nobody was listening. Oh, I feel him very much today. Can I get an amen? You can talk, you can preach, amen. You can pull somebody aside, amen. Try to tell them, this is what you're going to expect, amen. You better get your life in check, amen. You better repent, amen. And you can warn all day long, amen. But no, no, they will not listen. they rather do their own will. The Lord spoke into this man's heart, Amen. Go, Amen, to the to the uh, go to the to the temple, Amen. And you tell the elders, you tell the preachers, you tell the prophets, are all a bunch of liars, Amen. And today we get up speaking the truth, Amen. And people come against us. People about that, but I do care what is standing inside here today, amen, and if we don't open our ears, amen, and be sensitive with God is saying, amen, I'm telling you right now, you better wake up, amen. you better wake up, amen, because why? I can see how the heart becomes hard, amen. because why? There is a lack of repentance. The landscape of the heart is becoming dormant. No longer the sensitivity from the Lord anymore. This is exactly the thing, amen, of this culture, of this time, amen, that God speaks to the nation, amen, because they were no longer listening to God anymore. 
Oh, they know they had the prophets. They had prophets. They had the Torah. They had everything just like we do. But they stopped listening. Hello? You know, my wife can tell me all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. You're not listening. She'll tell me, hey, you know, I went to the doctor, did this. Okay, good deal, good deal. You're not listening. Pay attention. Because the facts of the matter, we're not listening. We're consumed of being tired over words. We're consumed, amen, when life just takes control of a man. We're not listening. We don't want to pay attention. Amen, I need my me time. Amen, leave me alone. And so God says, what happened to the, to the love and attention you used to give her? What happened to all that, amen? Put, this is where the fallow heart becomes hard. When the ground, amen, you get harder and harder. You can't break it no more. Oh my gosh, amen, if you can understand what I'm saying here tonight. If you can actually hear, amen, what God is trying to speak with us tonight. Because God is speaking into our lives tonight because life, amen, is about to change. Life for us as a ministry is about to change. Amen, things around us, look around you, brothers and sisters. Things are about to change everywhere you're at. We can't say, why me? Why do I deserve this? No, no, no. Let me tell you something. The same thing that was happening in Jeremiah's day. The lack of understanding. The lack of repentance. He says here in verse 4, amen, circumcise to the Lord, amen, and take away the foreskin of your heart. We put our afflictions... And the afflictions that we get from the world, we mingle them together. Worldliness. We're not turning, amen. Because why? Everybody throws money at a problem. I mean, you can say amen. amen. No? But see, if you talk to somebody, you know, oh my gosh, I'm about to lose this. Oh my gosh, it's, it's oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my God, I have no food. The dog died, amen. The fleas are, are attacking, amen. Again, I need, I need this. And it, oh, those are a whole lot of things you need right now. Well, 20 bucks too? Sure. Come on, people come to you and you got oh such a oh my gosh, I need I need groceries, I need this, and they be able to whatever and they, oh my god, the anxiety. And they say, okay, how much do you need? Oh, well, about fifty dollars. It ease the problems. But what happens to the heart? I said, what happens to the heart? It becomes hard. It becomes lukewarm in our lives. Are you here today? When you, you know, we, I, when I hear, amen, all this, believe me, can happen to every one of us. When you get in, even ministers, even pastors, amen, just get in this lolly la attitude about things. Are you here? Just another service. And they're rehearsing their ministry. Are you here? I, heard, I talked to this pastor, he said, well, I get in front of a mirror and I rehearse my sermons. So I don't have to uh, look at a certain I mean, I could just put it to the side, and I did the beer, and I do this, oh, 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 you know, oh, 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 you know, right at that moment. And, are you here today? This is the problem, man, because everything's well rehearsed. Well rehearsed. And the problem that we have today is we got well rehearsed Christians. They know exactly when to say amen. They know exactly when to say yes. Amen. And they know, like to, you know hey, I'm obedient on this. Yes. Amen. Can you do this? Yes. And can you do that? Yes. I am the yes man. And I can always say yes to you, Pastor. <laughs> but give me some truth. <laughs> What's in your heart? Amen. Because what do we see? Amen. We see, amen, many who need surgery this morning. This evening. Because you know what? We're trying to sow. You know, I've been sowing some seed for a while. Are you here? I've been sowing the seed a long time. And I got pretty encouraged by a young man. Amen. You know, when I read, I, I read and I see I, uh, about the past, amen, ministers before me. 
See, let me tell you something. Before Pastor Joe came, there were ministers. Before our ministry came here, there were ministers. Before even those ministers were here, amen, you go all the way back, amen, to 1970s. There were ministers here. Amen. Before that, amen, guess what? There were pastors here. And they were all praying for the same thing. Oh, God, do a miracle here. Oh, God, amen, we need the Holy Ghost, amen. Oh, God, we need some people. Because there's families, amen, today who need ministers. They need to hear the word of God. They need a spirit of comfort at times, amen. They need encouragement, amen. And so what happens, amen, uh, people begin, don't hear these things, amen. Don't want to hear truth anymore. I just want to be comfort. I just want this, amen. You're always saying this, and you're always doing that, amen. But you know what? If you look at the word of God, Jeremiah preached for 40 years and never want a soul. Are you here? The ones that he truly wanted. He had his followers, amen. He had all that, amen. If you look at Jewish history, it talks about his disciples were with him, but he can never win and never and, and always try to go to the king and go to the priest, and all they did was make fun of him and mock him. That's all they ever did. Hosea chapter 10, verse 1 tells us this, Israel, amen, is empty its vine, bringing forth fruit for himself. He says, according to the multitude of his fruit, he has increased his own altars. Building my ministry. Building my home. Building this. Well, Pastor God wants me to have it. Yes, he does. But he abundantly in prosperity instead of responding to great need of the people or the great need of the temple and what needed a man was the true amen of repentance of God amen they turned their backs amen and took the money instead of being loyal to Yahweh amen saying no God is our God don't put us with all these other gods take Baal out of here we're not going to worship the devil amen but no no they did not stick to their guns amen they went with the church system. Are you here today? Problems, amen? We see that today. Misuse of their privileges. Israel misused their privilege. The apple of God's eye misused their privilege. What do you mean, pastor? Well, they were anointed. They were children of God. And they got entitled. Christianity is the same way. Are you here? Christianity is the same way. It's a religion now. It's not a relationship. It's about prosperity. And let me tell you, Christians, amen, when it comes to prosperity, are often led away from God. They're, they're, the minute they get close, amen, that blessing pulls them away from the first things that they learn from God. Started running, and the hearts became hard. No one wanted to listen anymore. Are you here today? Amen. Amen. Because let me tell you something. What I have learned in 20 years of my life serving the Lord, in 16 years as a pastor, God, de God demands my undivided attention and my undivided heart. He wants not my divided heart. He wants my heart. He wants it fully. Amen. Nothing else matters. Amen. My wife knows I dearly love her. Amen. But when it comes to God, God is first. And I expect her the same thing. Nothing else matters. Amen. What matters, amen, is the will of God for our lives. Amen. Oh, yes, God wants us to be blessed, amen, and all these things. But you know what? I'm not going to stand before Alma, and I'm not going to stand before my pastor. I'm not going to stand before you, and I'm not going to stand before you. I am going to stand before Jesus Christ himself, amen. The Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present in the Lord, and I will stand in judgment for all the things I've said and all the things I've done, amen. And he demands, he requires, and he says he wants, amen, our heart. I want your heart. I want it all. I don't want second best. I don't want this. You want this job? This is what it requires. You can't do it. Step aside. You got to give it. You got to lead it all out. Holy Ghost, I pray right now you come down. I just want to give you my heart. Oh, God. Lay it all out on the line. It's got to be there. Nothing else matters, amen, but
but Christ Jesus. And when you have that full legs in, amen, he will bring the blessing to you. Because the worst kind of heart is the unrepented heart. The worst kind, amen, is when people do not repent no more. When you see, amen, the challenge, amen, I mean, when, when, remember we used to run to the altar. How many remember that? Run to the altar. God forgive me. No more. Now it's like this. I better go because everybody else is. Hello. No, no, no. There's a time and a place. Amen. You can run to the altar. Because this is about God. And some places, let me tell you how privileged you are here. Let me tell how privileged you are in this church. That other churches do not do. You can come and pray to your God, to your Savior. You can cry. You can get up and shout, amen. You can make a fool of yourself in the name of Jesus. And he'll love you even the more. For other places, amen, no altar call. Come on. No nothing. No tears. When's the last time there was tears on this thing? God forgive me. That is me, Lord. I fall short. God, that's me. Am I the only one that feels this way? Come on, I want to hear an amen. amen. It's about Jesus. I take saying this over and over and over. When I was in the streets, nobody cared. <laughs> I'm sure my children did. My, my babies loved me. They couldn't help me. But not a soul cared. Not a soul was there for me. Not a soul. But you know what? The day I swallowed my pride and I said, Father, I hit that altar and I cried like a baby. I cried even because I knew I was wrong. Right. And from that day forward, I spent my life at this altar. Amen. I spent my life, amen, crying out to the Lord because he's given me so much. Amen. He's given me life. Right. It's given me all. And the desires of my heart have been fulfilled. Yes. But my desires, amen, are not in all the blessings of the world, amen. He gave me a good, godly woman with the integrity is impeccable. Amen. Truth, honest, amen. This is what I needed. He gave me, amen, a life, amen, where we were dying and we lose hope, amen, and we forget, amen. And you know what? I want to be at this altar, oh God. God was trying to get to the people, amen. Come to me. I want you to come back. Please come back. God was saying, I have to raise up a kid. I got to raise up a kid. He'll listen. And he raises up a child, amen. And says, before I knew you, amen, I was with you, amen. I put a spirit in you. You're going to be my prophet. And you're going to preach it to the world, amen. And they're not going to listen to you. And God put that in a man, on a young boy when they were able men. listen. Didn't care. They were more worried about, amen, all that was around him. Let's worry about the king. Let's worry about the wives. Let's worry about this. Let's worry about that. They didn't care about anything else. Amen. Well, the altar of God, no more tears. No more sacrifice. People did not care. Do you remember that? I remember every day. Every day. Found us lost. You remember? I remember some of you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Look at your life, amen. I mean, you don't realize that people. You have that person in your church. Come on. Oh, they're all like this and like that and like that. Well, what are you? Yeah. So I know how to defend you. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember all oh, this. This person is this. This person is that. What about you? Come on. What about you? Well, I got saved. What's on the day? Oh, but they're, they're but they're hearing the truth. Yeah. They're not going like this in the air. <laughs> Hello. This is you know when you read your Bible, Amen. When God says, Amen, you know when He says the worst kind of heart is the unrepented heart, and the worst kind of person, Amen, is the unteachable person. Yeah. When they're no longer teachable because you're no longer listening, yeah. you're no longer.
longer listening to reason. Oh, you're not the only one that falls there. Can I get an amen? You're not the only one. I'm constant God's constant touching me and trying to mold me, amen, the way he wants. And just like you, amen, I fight, I fight. But I never forget the cross. I never forget, amen, you know what you say. Hello, Matthew chapter chapter 13, when Jesus tells us, amen, here's the issue and the problem today. Here's the issue and the problem, amen, in the parable of the sower, amen, and the weeds and the tares. He said, but meanwhile, and when the man slept, the enemy came in and sowed tares among the wheat. And he went his way. Jesus deals about the, uh, he deals with the ground of the heart of the man. Because he knew, amen, how men think. The confidence we gain and the understanding that we get. And we get full of ourselves, and we become selfish, and we're no longer teachable. We're just all about who we are. Don't tell me, thus saith me, not this saith God. And you can't break into that person. And then there is a shield between you and me. Are you here? Oh, are you hearing me today? Because we're dealing with attitude. We're dealing with the attitude. The attitude of an individual, amen, is lived under the spirit of hypocrisy. Are you here? The condition of the heart, amen, becomes way hardened. Hardened even more, amen. This is what the Bible says, amen. All of a sudden, amen, the enemy comes in and he puts mental blocks into you. He attacks not your heart. It's getting hard, but up here is it going to harm you. Are you here? And the condition of your life, amen, becomes more and more self-absorbed, amen, more than anything else. Now you're looking at your glory. Come on. Well, nobody wants to hear me today. Can I get an amen? Mental blocks, hardness, amen, all these lead to exactly how the enemy comes in and what he does, amen, you become dry in spirit. You become dry in spirit. This is why, amen, it's important for you and I to pray. Pray, oh God, revive my soul. I pray to God, amen, oh Lord God, I need a little revival here. Amen, God, I need a, I need a, I need something because why? Because we get weighed down with nothing but problems. We get weighed, you know, I feel sorry for these. I was listening on the radio about a Christian man who was talking to Dr. Dobson's son. Amen. And him and his wife are, are they're working in New York City. Wife came home and she was there. She's been there for like 48 hours or 72 hours straight. Working every day, working every day with all this that's happening. Amen. And, and, and wearing the same materials and whatnot. And, and she got so overwhelmed. Someone turn on the air, please. So overwhelmed, amen. With people dying around her, that it consumed her. It consumes you. Somebody, if you see them, amen. And then she comes home, amen, after a long shift, amen, crying to her husband, amen. And all he says, well, get over it, you're a doctor. Come on. He wasn't being sensitive, he was more worried about his things. Are you here? And that becomes hard. Amen. We're more concerned about our needs. Amen. Amen. And these are Christian people. My heart went out to them. My heart goes out to these you know, I hear, you know, Veronica she called me, Pastor this and Pastor that, you know, please pray for us. It's all it's hitting everybody. We was walking around in fear and all this other stuff. Don't worry, God got you. Can I get an amen? You see, because the first thing we do, amen, and the first thing that everyone says is, I'm tired of this. We've all been there. I'm tired of the attacks. I'm tired of the wearing down. I'm tired of it. I was tired and through last week. I mean, Monday, I was just like, man, I'm done with this. Oh, my gosh. The emotional strain, amen. Things that happen, you see, we don't realize, and life is precious. So precious. You know, 
know, we think about, well, what, what are you tired of, Pastor? It's the men's home, it's the tires, it's your marriage, is it your children, is it your family? The dad is dying without Jesus Christ, and God keeps putting it in my heart. You hear it every day in the news, amen, and it breaks, amen. Because don't you know that they're dying without Jesus? Wake up, I come here. Father, don't let him touch us, please. Father, protect my babies and my wife and my church, oh God. Pray for this and pray for, you know, pray for so and so. They're working in the midst of that. God, please, amen. And it breaks your heart. Pray to God sometimes. God, just take it away. I don't want it no more. I got kids. You know, we got family in, in New York City right now, too. Pray, God, pray for, for Sister Betty. Oh, God, please pray. I'll protect the family, protect Danny Wilkerson's family and the church over there. God, you know, you, you, there's things that go through your mind. Brothers and sisters, are you hearing me? It's not just the problems that we have around us. It's a burden. It's a burden. Broken relationships. How do, we, how do we make them back, God? It takes a toll. People are lost. They manage it. Why? Why can't they just? I can't even imagine. I mean, just the little things that I go through. How can God speak to this one man? God's speaking to this guy. He's speaking to, to Jeremiah. Jeremiah's broken. They don't listen to me. They mock me. They do this. The sowing of the seed, amen, is one of the most important things. And that's going to stop us now. The enemy knows, amen, that we, what we do. Satan wants to slow this kingdom down. He comes and he twists God's word. He does what he's brought. Amen. They always get back. Amen. Remember the pit you, that God found you in? I said, remember the pit that God found us in? Amen. Let's not forget that. He pulled us out. He pulled us out of this one. He's gonna, he's gonna get, there's going to be daylight. But things are going to change. Things are going to change for us. And all we can do is roll with the punches. How many hear me today? We try to get back to God. The enemy wants us to be lost. God never gives up on us. And I don't believe that for one second. You know, when I listening to this man the other day tell a story about Mr. John Husk. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. He's a, a man, he man in the 1600s. And, uh, you see, you, we don't realize how blessed and how privileged we are. Yeah. We, don't, we don't understand that. And, uh, because we got our Bibles and we treat it like nothing. Yeah. No one reads. No one prays. Amen. man is very Consumed with life. And then we're consumed with many problems. We forget the cross. We forget many things. And back in those days, amen, they weren't allowed. The Catholic Church didn't allow anybody to read Bibles. The Catholic Church, amen, with a uh, uh, standard the priests, amen, would, minute, would tell them what the Bible said. But it was written in Latin. And they would speak in Latin to English people. And people were like, what is he talking about? Well, when old John Huss came around, amen, got a hold of a Torah and got a hold of a Bible because he spoke Latin, heard what was being taught, amen, from one of the fathers or brothers, whatever they called them, and said, that's not what this is talking about. And so he begins to write, or excuse me, uh, Wycliffe, he begins to write, copy down his Bible. A new Bible. You have the. That's why we have the White John or the White Cliff Bible. And uh, it's one of the first Bibles. And he began to preach. Are you here? He began to preach, and they killed him for it. Because the enemy knows how to stop us. Yeah. He wants to kill us. Yeah. Well, some years later, another man comes along. Goes into the city, amen, with his Bible and begins to preach the word of God. 
and begins to tell, sow the seed and coming in and he never won a soul. He went into a town and they mocked him and they laughed at him. And they said all kinds of things to him, amen. And all of a sudden, amen, the, 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 the priest around him from the Catholic Church grabbed him, amen. And they took him and they were going to burn him into state. They put him in front of the city, amen, and they're holding him back, amen. And then the Spirit of God laid upon this man's life. You may kill me now, but a hundred years from this day that you are trying to kill me, another man will come and he will bring revival to this town. And all they did was laugh at him. All they did was put him on fire. And he never denied Christ. He stuck to his faith, amen. He burned up, amen, and died. One hundred years later to the day. That's when John Huss came in and won the city. The seeds that were sown. Are you here today? The sowing of the seed a hundred years later to the day because God's spirit will not die. It will bring a life. It brings it up. Amen. Because this is why we preach. This is why we do. Amen. And I believe in the spirit of revival. Amen. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't want the church to die. I don't want the church to go dry. I want the church to be alive. Can I get an amen? Understanding what God is trying to do with us. Amen. Because we have been sowing seed. We have been saving souls. We have been under attack in all different spiritual aspects, amen. But brother and sisters, amen, you need reviving. You need to be awake, amen. You need Jesus to save your soul. Come and repent. One of the saddest things is that we see God's word, amen, and a time is coming, and it's coming quick. That all of a sudden, amen, we're, this is going to be harvest time for us. Amen. You know, I was talking to an individual, and he's like, you have to plant this type of seed now. Because if you don't, you're going to miss that window. And if you try to plant it after the window, you're not going to get nothing. I'm, I don't know anything about certain seeds of grass and this and that. You hear? And that's the same thing with churches. We are soul winners. We are called to win souls for Jesus. Amos chapter 8, amen, verse 11, the Bible says this. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. And I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but a famine of hearing of the word. You see, and and right now, not many want to hear the truth. Maybe you don't want to hear it. I don't know. But because of hypocrisy, the lifestyle that many have fallen into, and when hypocrisy has ripened, it's like that fruit on a tree when you don't pluck it, amen, and you leave it there, amen. Even the Bible says, amen, it talks about even a basket of, of ripened fruit, amen. It starts to stink. It starts to smell. It's not doing nothing but sitting there. It's not germinating. It's not producing. The fruit is just stinking up, amen. It's just going to waste, amen. And I'm afraid at times, amen, that's what happens with us in here in the church today. If we don't get on the ball, if we don't start praying, amen, in the spirit, we want the fruits of the spirit. We want love. We want peace. We want joy. We want happiness, amen. But this starts to get hard, amen. If you want a piece of that fruit, you need to get on your knees because you are the tree. Can I get an amen? You are the tree of the spirit, amen. You should be, be right there, amen, by the living waters, amen. And let it touch you. Let it absorb your life, amen. This is why we have to do what we need to do. We are people of God. See, Pastor, we can't win souls. I can't do this. I can't do that right now. Maybe not. But you can pray. The Lord says... This is a prophetic word. Now, many scholars want to believe, amen, that this word came during the dark ages. They call it the dark ages for the very reason I just spoke about, about how the Catholics, amen, kept the word of God dead to the church. They kept it for themselves. 
They clothe themselves with fine linens, put on big hats. Remember? Yeah. You ever see the bulk, the bulk? Yeah. Huh? They have a big nipple or something. Right? I don't know what they call it. No, is that what it is? It's like a Q tip. Hello. Full of hypocrisy. And the problem is, is that what we're reaching today when no one's listening to God anymore. You see, we can pray all day long, but are we listening? Are you here? You know, when God speaks to you, the Bible says, and we're going to get into this down the line, amen. In the last dream, I will pour out my spirit. Hello. Young men and young lady will have visions. Old, old men and older women. I would say old lady. Old lady. It does say old ladies, doesn't it? We'll have dreams. Dreams of what? Dreams of last days. Dreams of warnings. God speaking to us. The voice of God is trying to reach down. And he says the same thing that he said to Israel. Come back to me. Repent. It's nothing, it's nothing hard to understand this. This is not a, a, a rah-rah sermon, amen. It's more of a concern because our job is to preach to the, preach the truth. Amen. Our calling, amen, is to warn your family. First of all, go home and tell your family. Yeah. Warn your children, your grandchildren, your sons and daughters. You need to warn them. Yeah. Amen. You need to warn them because in our life, amen, life goes just like that. This, the other day, somebody got shot and killed. Happens just like that. How does it happen? Tempers fly. I mean, things just happen and instantly. Life changes. It can change for you. Instantly. You never know what's going to happen. Tomorrow is promised to nobody. I mean, you can walk out of here tonight, amen, without repenting ever. Without crying, without doing everything. And some tragedy might happen. Not your fault. But something bad can happen. You can go home, pick up a phone, and might get some bad news tonight, tomorrow, but at some time. I remember my mom and my sisters and my daughters crying. And when I finally turned my heart over to the Lord, my daughter's like, do you know what that's like? Every time the phone would ring at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. You know what that's like, Dad? daughter crying, my little daughter, she's crying. Daddy, it's dad, dad, dad. It was... You look at their little faces and you know, man, I'm doing this to them. My mom tell me many times. My mom experienced that one night. I'm obviously doing my business. Bam, got into a car accident. According to them, I died. Went to a windshield. And she got that call. Your son's died. Your son's in the hospital. Tore up. Got there. She sees your son. Blood. Just like that. Life changes. So I pray to God that we hear the Lord tonight. Because God wants to put our lives back in order. Because if you know what? If we have dryness. Or the heart's becoming hard. And I pray to God that our church... Amen. It wakes up. Amen. We need a wake-up call. And God loves you and I, first of all, first and foremost. And he understands, amen, the things that we go through. And we're tired. Spent out at times. Life just drains us. But Jesus loves us. You know, if anything we learn in life, amen, he loves and cares for us. Started with nothing. Look what you got now. Somebody can say amen to that. In order for us to hear from God, we must listen. And listen to what the Spirit says. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 says, He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to him who overcomes, it says, I will give, give him to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what life, where area you may be in or not be in. 
some of you may be victorious. But look around our surroundings. Look at home. Can you hear it? Because I hear a cry out there. I hear a cry that many souls need Jesus. Right now, as Jeremiah preached his heart out, he says, return to me. God speaks to him. He says, return to me. Return from your backsliding. Return to me. Come to me and I will pour out my love on you. The Lord speaks to us tonight. Can I get an amen? When we turn genuine repentance toward him, amen, and the Lord speaks his words, amen, this is when we find the victory. We will find the blessing. We will find victory. And we put our confidence, our trust in Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. How many love Jesus tonight? Lord, give Lord a clap on me. Come on, brothers and sisters. Only a few of us. We love Jesus tonight. Amen. And as we turn our heads tonight and take a bow, amen, for our, before our God, this is the opportunity. You come tonight. You come before this altar. You leave it here. Maybe those, amen, are listening tonight, amen. You need Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. You plead, amen. You go through things in life. You need Jesus. You desperately need the Lord tonight, and he wants to hear from you. There's still a harvest left. There's still time, amen, to win the harvest back. I pray that every day of my life repentance. Father, forgive us of our sins. Forgive this nation, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for not following your commands. Lord, I believe in your true word, your only word. I pray, oh God, that you st we stand before you, Lord God, your very throne, Lord God. In your throne reach justice and righteousness. That you forgive us. Lord, we love you, Lord God, and I pray to break up the follow ground, Lord God. Let your souls, Lord God, come here tonight because he, each one is your child, is your children, Lord God. Father, that you bring, Lord God, forth a spirit of, of comfort tonight. A spirit of peace, Lord God, and we are, you know that you're in charge of all this. And we pray for those, Lord God, who have broke covenant with you. And I pray this evening, Lord God, that you forgive our church if we've fallen short. Would you bring us a spirit of revival, Lord God, in our heart, Lord God, let us answer true to you. But if you're out there, even you need Jesus Christ to be your Lord. As these leaders and speak souls, even, are here this morning, praying intercession, even, not just for themselves, but for their families. But all you need to do is say a prayer tonight. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe you died for me on that cross. And I believe that you're alive and you're at the right hand of God. And I pray that you forgive me of my sins. For I have many sins in my life. Let me live for you. Let me walk with you. Let me stand by the tree of life. Let me have you in my heart. Lord God, who created me a new life today. Lord God, I repent of all sin, repent of all life in the world. And from this day forward, let me live for you. As your spirit just goes down and touches souls tonight. Lord, that you touch a soul tonight that's out there, Father. And if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just. He is faithful, amen, in all things. He is faithful, amen, as he is our king. Our Lord and Savior, He cut up our sin, that I will have a new and a more son, that He will have a more son, that your healing powers.